Hey what's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so this video is gonna be about why I'm recommending computer science as a major, right? So many people have been asking me questions about okay, hold on. Many people have been asking questions about whether they should uh, major computer science or business or whatnot. And you know, I know it's really hard for uh, high school students, like you know, 19, 17 years old students, to decide what kind of career they want to you know build. It's too young for them to know, right? Because based on my experience, I wasn't really sure until like you know, uh, third year, fourth year in university about what field in computer science I want to go, even if I was majoring in computer science. So. There are a few reasons why I recommend computer science, and those are a little more uh, abstract and high level, and so hope you understand. Um, so one of the reasons why I recommend computer science is software engineering, computer science in general, follows the basic our human life, you know, uh, principles. So what I mean by that is life, our life. There's only thing that's constant in this world. There's only thing that change, that doesn't change, which is a change. Only thing constant in this world is change. Life constantly changes time with the time. Five years from now, everything might be different, right? Technology changes this world, and you need to adapt to survive, to have you know advantage over somebody else, to get paid well, or to have you know, a better work-life balance. And if you are slow to adapt to a change. You're gonna be probably left behind, just like in the Japanese economy is being left behind the global economy because it's already too late. Japanese economy companies are not adapting fast enough. So that's the key thing. You know, one of the most important principles in life, kind of like you know, shizen no setsuri, is that only thing constant in this world is change. And you know, computer science and software engineering are pretty much. Um, are built around that principle. So when we work on software engineering programming, we always need to think about how to to how to accommodate future changes because my customers might want to add new features, customer want this and that. How do we code in the first place so that it's easier after to add changes, right? So that's the thing. Like you know, we are really thinking about you know how to adapt to changes, how to make it flexible enough in later and so computer science really makes you think about how to adapt to changes and that's really aligned with life principle that I just mentioned so if you study computer science you're gonna be better at adapting to new things in your life personal life right instead of doing something like more routine like a network engineering a database or business you know if you're doing something more static doing you know like in business administration, so like you know, uh, office admin, you're doing the routine works. Nothing changes, and so you don't learn new things. What what's gonna happen is that you stop learning, and your brain is gonna be you know, you know, functioning uh, a little slow because you don't you know stimulate your brain enough. So that's the thing, key thing about um, computer science. It's really nicely aligned with the uh, uh, life principle, being able to adapt to change, which means you're gonna be always learning new things and adapting to, you know, pretty fast adapt to new things. That's really key to survive in this world, fast changing world. Second thing is that you become more humble. You become more humble and open to learning because every year, every few months, new things are gonna come up. You need to read news to keep yourself updated in the industry. Like Snapchat new feature comes, Instagram introduces, introduces a story that they pretty much copy from Snapchat, and then Google announces you know, Google Home and then Android, and then Amazon announces Alexa, and Apple announces Apple TV, and then Uber announces what the self-driving car research, and then Tesla is doing a rocket thing, and then Facebook announces like you know, Facebook Live TV, which is kind of copy from YouTube Live, and then Facebook is gonna in the future announce is going to announce a VR virtual reality kind of video right as I just as I just mentioned about so many technologies and new features and new products there's so many things changing 
and then if you are not really active about that changes in the world and the society you're gonna be left behind and uh, before you know the job that you might be working at or you're working in will disappear in 20 years 10 years five years McDonald's think about McDonald's you know that those cashier they are being replaced by the touch panel thing because it's you know automatable same thing if you don't think enough technology and robots is gonna replace what you can do you know workforce workforce is already being replaced by robots so really technology is the key and the to keep up with the current and modern in the really fast changing world and society it's really important for you to get ahead of the technology and to do that computer science and software engineering is pretty much the, the only thing that guarantees that you can be you know at least and have a other you know, IQ and uh, uh, technological uh, knowledge and skills to keep yourself up to the fast, uh, fast, uh, fast moving industry and society. Um, other than that, adaptability, flexibility, uh, um, humbleness, because uh, humbleness, yeah. So when it comes to you know, software engineering, it's really a new field. It's not like in you know, a hardware engineering where, or like you know, architecture, building architectures in a house and you know, bridges. It's already established. With software, we always need to change like, into new things, adapt to new things. So we are always experimenting. We are always introducing new features, and not always this you know established uh, problem uh, solution patterns. So we have this uh, uh, concept called uh, uh, design patterns, and design pattern is pretty much the uh, well-known and well-researched best practices to tackle certain kind of problems. So to tackle type uh, you know this kind of you know, this kind of uh, problem we usually uh, we use already established and battle tested uh, uh, problem solving patterns and approaches which is called design patterns so that we don't need to reinvent the wheel from the scratch in software engineering we never want to reinvent the wheel because it takes more time more overhead and somebody else has probably done better already so why do we build something from scratch so much overhead so much more cost money time effort same thing in a life in this world nothing is really really unique everything is modeled after something else let's say eBay you know, Amazon is a little bit modeled from eBay PayPal was PayPal was born because of eBay. Uh, you know, Alibaba was born after eBay. Uh, you know, Instagram story was invented was kind of you know introduced after Snapchat video stories. Everything else, you know, almost everything in technology is kind of like you know kind of modeling each other. It's not quite copying but modeling. And life same way. You know, somebody has done better in personal finance. Somebody has done better than you in fitness. Somebody has done better in learning English. Somebody has done better in travel traveling. Somebody has done better in relationship and dating, right? So instead of you know trying to reinvent the wheel by yourself, which is gonna cost you a lot of money and time, why don't we take advice from somebody who has done better than us and follow the best practices? best patterns so that we can shortcut our learning curve time money right that's the concept of like, you know, using a, um, a design pattern you know, best best practices and so that software engineering we have uh, something called a best uh, design pattern which in my personal opinion follows exactly what we need to do in our personal life and so if you study computer science, software engineering, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be good at uh, learning some of the you know, best practices in the industry about, let's say, you know, how to, how to lose weight, how to, <laughs> sorry about the light, I'm struggling, you know? And what, why am I saying this? Because, you know, if you study computer science, you are told, you are taught not to be invent the wheel because somebody has done things better. So what does this apply to your life? It's because it's gonna make you become more humble. You, it's gonna make you, you know, look at you know better solutions in in, in the society, and it makes you become more humble.
to read books from successful people, read books from experts, read books from coaches and instructors, as opposed to, you know, you trying to, you know, find the best way possible by all by yourself, because it's gonna take lots of time, and we don't have a long time to live in this world and in our lives. So that's the reason why, you know, many people that I've seen and I've met in non-computer science degree related people, especially like a business really static oriented job, let's say, you know, um, I, I, I'm not going to name it, but some of the people who just do routine works, they don't have the idea of like shortcutting by following the best practices in the industry they don't have they don't necessarily have the idea of design patterns like you know well established time tested battle tested approaches to do something like fitness or finance personal finance or you know I don't know what else but like the human psychology like a confidence you know uh, relationship matters they try to kind of experiment randomly by their own way and it takes more time and money Whereas, you know, here doing computer science, you know that, you know, you are already open-minded enough to take somebody's, you know, best approaches and become humble enough to be open-minded, well-rounded, well-informed, and then, you know, just, you know, adapt and, uh, what, um, try not to reinvent the wheel by yourself, you know? So that's pretty much it. Um, if you don't want to read books, of successful people which are battle tested they have stood the time of the test um, and they have been endorsed by many or many people you can see that on Amazon reviews if you disqualify a endorsement from the general public and also in the industry and by successful people if you are disqualifying you know if you know, if many people are endorsing something, there must be something really great about it. And one of the top, of the most, most, most successful people, uh, approach, usually have stood the test of the time for like twenty years, thirty years, fifty years. So you know, it's not just a random success pattern that just lasted for one or two years. You want to look for some patterns that are, have been around for long, longer the better because you're more confident that it's gonna work in many situations you know so that's a kind of software engineering best practices and design patterns it has been around tested for like 30 years 20 years 10 years that's better same as life same as books you want to read books that's been tested for like 10 years 20 years that's what you want to do to shortcut your learning that's it guys that's why I recommend computer science if you don't I'm totally fine thank you guys for watching I'll see you guys next time bye bye